Hello and welcome to our monthly webinar to help support and offer resources to marketing professionals. This presentation is put on by Boss Lady Consulting and Clarity PX. Boss Lady Consulting serves nonprofits and purposeful businesses or owners that are ready to grow. And Clarity PX serves rural health, small and regional clinics, hospitals, and systems in helping align brand and experience in their organizations. So this tools and tips and techniques have come from the trenches from more than 20 years in corporate America, from small rural hospitals to a Fortune 50 company. The types of things that we're talking about here are super practical. We have templates for a lot of them. So if you see something that you want, put in the chat or go to our websites and email us and we'll be happy to send it to you. So we're going to talk today about the different types of management. We're going to introduce you to a lot of tools for how to, you know, whether you're more of a paper-based person or more of an electronic-based person or neither. Um, so we'll go over a few things and also really make sure that you have an uh, introduction to a lot of resources that are going to be very helpful for you. So we're going to go over management by paper, management by software, management of your time and energy, and then some final thoughts as well. So here we go. When the CEO says they're looking for marketing help or saying, oh, marketing, take care of that, it's probable that what seems to be missing is promotion. But without the other two elements, strategy, and project management, not much is going to happen. And that's a quote from Seth Godin. And if you're in marketing, you know he is amazing and kind of the godfather of marketing theory and practice and direction. And so it's really important that when you get assigned something or, hey, marketing, you take lead on that, that you take some time to really organize and get get a, some kind of system set up and we'll go over many, as I said, so that you don't just jump into action. Often when you just jump right into action, it can end up a little bit disastrous. So the first style of management of projects is management by the seat of your pants. <laughs> Are any of you familiar with this kind of management style? I, I know a lot of people who operate by the seat of their pants. And honestly, given the sheer volume of what you've been given to do, management by the seat of your pants is kind of a very popular way for marketing. And so the, I found this quote that said, the universe has a way of testing our resilience. Barely making it in time is a testament to our ability to navigate chaos and emerge victorious. And if that does not describe the life of a marketing one team or two person team or whatever, if that does not describe the life of a marketing professional, then I don't know what does. So really though, what we want to do is encourage you to get a strategy and then have a system for tracking your projects. And I want to say on this next slide that if you don't have a strategic planning tool, we do have a template. You can go to our website, bossladyconsult.com or clarity-px.com and download a free strategic planning template. Or if you put your email in the chat or just email us, contact us through the website, we will send you that template for free. It's not, you know, it's not um, something that is behind a closed door because we want to help as many of you as possible be successful. So <clears throat> the first type of management, a lot of people, anybody here a management by post-it note? Yeah, there's a lot of post-it notes in our life. And there's some people who just do better with paper. They print all the things out. They do better with paper technology. 
and everything on the computer is not really your style. So if that's the case, I want to talk about, you know, whatever paper you use, have one place that it all goes to, whether that is a folder. And this was an approach I used a lot throughout the years where I had a file folder for every major project. So this was a project that I used a lot as a professional where I would just have a file folder. And if I had a maternity health, there was one folder for that. And everything that went into it was related. If somebody stopped by and I scratched down a note, or if I had all the post-it notes, I'd just stick them all in there. If I had an email that related, I would stick it in there. Or if I had a resource that I thought about for this program, I would put everything in that one folder for that campaign, for the project, for the anniversary party, for whatever it is that you were working on. And so that's one option is to have a folder for every project that you're working on. And the thing that that does is it's, it, A, keeps you from going, oh, I know I had something I was supposed to, whatever. It keeps you from doing the little treasure hunt in your emails and your all the documents, whatever. And it also keeps you more organized so that you have everything you need to do a strategy or to send the next communication or for your final report. It's a really helpful way. Another thing that we've done that used post-it notes was a Kanban type style of board. In this case, we had whiteboards in our office or for those that didn't have it, we found rolling whiteboards. For those that didn't want a big piece of furniture and couldn't afford that, there is rolls of whiteboard vinyl that you can just put right on the wall. It's like just sticky vinyl. It doesn't hurt the paint or anything. It attaches by static but you can have that on the wall. If you don't want to use either of those, you can just use big, um, you know, big paper like this kind for a flip chart or a big post-it note, whatever, and use it on the wall. And the way that we did these Kanban boards was we had a column that was for new so that during the week or as things went on, people could see okay, these are the new ideas. We'd have a section for in process or going to a work group, things that are kind of on hold for now or whatever. But if you did this idea for a project, you could just have, okay, this project has a column, this one, this one, and just put all your sticky notes up there. Or if it's a whiteboard, write your notes right on there. And that was an easy way to visually be able to track. We did this for a lot of things for whether it was at the production of an annual report or some kind of marketing timeline collateral thing that was it, or it was a campaign or it was an event, we used the whiteboards a lot because it gave us a visual place to remember <laughs> and to keep track of progress. So the Kanban style board could work. For those of you who love post-it notes, you could just put your post-it note board up there or just write right on it. And then the RPM style is what I lovingly refer to and what my husband's favorite approach is random pile management style. So if you don't have time or don't want to, or it's not in your nature to organize this way, at least just make one stack on your credenza or on the side of your desk for each project and keep, maybe you just take one piece of paper and write you know, a uh, marketing campaign and you clip them all together and you have a pile for each event. The idea here is to sort them out and not have all of the different things mixed together because you waste a lot of time trying to figure out the, where is that thing? And if you're anything like me, when we're flying by the seat of our pants, which I will show you that picture because I love it. When we're flying by the seat of our pants, it's easy to misplace things. So management by paper. It's not, it's not like, oh, you're old school, whatever. If that's what works for you, embrace it. But make sure you have a way 
to be able to get, um, find your things quickly. Just sort them out into different piles. All right. So we're going to go to management by software and there are a lot of options. I have a lot of samples here for you. I have screenshots from many of the most popular project management systems. So if you would prefer to have everything on your computer, accessible on your phone, whatever, this may be an option for you. And I'm going to start with just standard and then move into software. There are some that are free. There are some that are very low cost. So I've tried to pick the ones that are most relevant and helpful to keep you organized when you're dealing with a lot of different events and activities and moving parts and spinning plates. So the first idea is just shared project folders. If you have access to either a SharePoint or Google and you can just have a shared folder for each event, much like the actual paper folder, you can just drag everything in there. You can put the emails in there. You can drag the folders in there. You can have a Google sheet or a Google page in there that you're just typing notes every time you're talking about this thing. And you can at least have one folder in your computer, hopefully shared if there's more people helping you, that you can you know, keep track of where you're at. The same thing can be done on SharePoint. SharePoint's a little bit of a bugger though. And if you're not in there all the time, I don't recommend it. But if you, if your organization, we have some clients whose whole organization centers around SharePoint. And so then that makes it an easy place to manage and control your information, all the details, all the messages onto one SharePoint folder. But as I said, if you're not normally in there, I don't recommend it. So spreadsheets and presentations and trackers. There are a lot of things and I'll show you a few samples. And if you love any of these, put your name in the chat or email us and I can send you these templates. So this, pay, this piece here is, this was a huge work group for a provider experience project that we were working on. We were trying to improve the provider experience with our health insurance. This, was, this is a PowerPoint tracker that gave a visual timeline of all the deliverables for our executive leadership by quarter. And this little gray bar here in the line is where are we at today. So we just drug this over as we got things done and you could see what the deliverables were and when the timeframes would be coming. This is a really good approach. The project was broken down into four different kind of main things, which is the different colors. And, you know, one about provider communications and one about, you know, fixing problems that were identified, one about team training. And then there was another about collaboration and network building and all of that. And so those were the kind of groups that were broken down. And we were able to use PowerPoint as a way to give the visual timeline and keep track of what are we supposed to be working on. Now, I will tell you that this frame that you're seeing right here had a few other pages, a Gantt chart, a tracker that's similar to this down here that had a red, yellow, green. And so there were other things behind this, but if you need a visual way to map out the timeline of your projects, PowerPoint can work. Probably easier is Excel spreadsheet. And this is a sample of a huge event that we did for a client that was in two different cities on two different days and it had all kinds of moving parts. And so we simply had an Excel spreadsheet that had all of the tasks, the areas broken down, who was it assigned to, when was it due? And then you can see down here in the status column, we have it conditional formats for if it's green, it's on time, 
If it's yellow, it's fallen behind. If red, it's really at risk. And if it was blue, in some cases they use blue for complete. In this case, we used green for complete. So we broke down every step of every item, made sure there was somebody assigned a due date that for it, and we kept track visually. This particular spreadsheet was four pages long in Excel. That was the number of details we had to manage for this one, two events, which was one of 12 clients that we were managing. So you know that we had to have all our thoughts in one place, or we would spend a half hour every time trying to figure out, now, where were we? What were we going to do? What's going on? So, um, you know, again, this is, Excel is terrific for stuff like this. You could then take this kind of thing and do a spreadsheet like this that gave you the overall high level progress of how you're doing. So that's a couple samples. Now, the other thing that we're going to talk about are some software programs. I gave, I'm showing you on this slide four different versions that are software project management programs. I've used all of them. Monday.com has a free version. So if you're a small shop or want to just try it out, it is available. And the nice thing, you see different views here. All of these programs do these views. So if you like more of a table view where it's giving you who's it, what's the priority, what is the timeline, when's it due, and then it gives a status. If you like more of that table chart, then you can have that view. This view here of Trello, which also I believe has a free version, if not, it's very inexpensive, has more of the cards. So the nice thing about these, here's ClickUp. This is the one we use for our agency. And I will say Asana is very similar. ClickUp is a little more customizable. I won't go into the details of the software, but the slides will come to you after the fact. And if you want to do a trial or test them out, the nice thing about these is that we can, and maybe I will show you, we, you can drag all the emails, the art, the files, comments, you can assign it to people. If you have another colleague in the organization who's working with you, you can assign this task to them and it will email them. All of these are able to keep track of every detail. In ClickUp, even when we have emails from clients of, oh, here's a photo for you to use, we can forward that email or text straight to ClickUp and it puts it right on the board. And so it's a really nice electronic way to collaborate across teams, but also to harness and organize. And then the nice thing is you see on this Asana, it's more of a, this is more of a sprint layout kind of thing, but all of these have the ability to look at a calendar so that then you can go into this week and see the deliverables for every project that are due this week. And that kind of approach is really helpful. So that's the benefit of Monday, of Trello, of ClickUp, of Asana. ClickUp and Asana have like a short free trial if you want to try them. ClickUp is a little more involved in terms of getting used to. But if you're in a marketing organization that needs somebody to like do a request to marketing, you can set that up through ClickUp and it will automatically go to a board. The people enter all the things, they attach their photos. It will automatically go into an account on ClickUp for you so that you already have all the information, the attachments, everything else you need. We started to do this through a SharePoint at one point um, at a corporation I worked for. We were getting marketing requests from all across the organization. And I, if you're in marketing, you know what I'm talking about. This guy wants a flyer. They need something. They need a party. They want a social post. They want an article for the newsletter, whatever. ClickUp has the ability, and I believe that Monday might too, to submit 
of electronic form. You just give them the link and everything they request is automatically in your project management. So if that is something that's interesting and you want me to show you our ClickUp board, I totally would do that. I would walk you through how we use it. We've got forms. You can have your agendas in there. You can have your strategic plan in there. You can have, it's how we plan all of our content as well. And so we have a very robust function in ClickUp. And then it has the ability to click and say, oh, I need an editorial calendar so that I can see what's up this week. It's a really nice way to organize. So all of these are great. I've used them. They're all a little bit different. Trello is probably the simplest of all. Monday.com, then next. And then I would say Asana and ClickUp are pretty even in terms of complexity. But they're a terrific way to keep track. And what I would do, you know, on Trello, you could have a, one of these stacks for each project that you have going on. And then a little card gets added each time you have a new element to it. Assign a due date, assign a person. If they're all you, that's okay. Then you, you're you able to be able to oh, open that up and type a few notes in there. Oh, I had a thought or Mr. So-and-so said this. So you can pull it up and add your note. And, and the idea, much like the paper thing, is that all of your thoughts, all the details, all of the resources around the stuff you're working on is in one place. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so when you are managing tons of projects at once, there are a few kind of practical things that I want to walk through to help you manage your own time and energy. There's at some point, there is a limit to how much you can do. And I know from personal experience that when I got really busy, the first thing that would go would be, well, I'm going to just skip the gym this morning and get to work a little earlier so I can get a little more done. And I'll just go home earlier. Well, that never happens. I'm there earlier, so I'm working longer. I was the first one there, the last one to leave. I was worrying about things at home. I was dragging stuff home. And the goal of this webinar is to help avoid those 2 a.m. Oh, oh my gosh, thoughts. Because as soon as you are in bed and you have the thought, don't forget to dot, dot, dot. Bing! The eyes are wide open. You cannot fall asleep. If you know, you know. And it's so the idea is to be able to try to manage your time and energy when, you know, the mantra now in corporate America and in so many organizations is do more with less. And that more with less means more on your plate. And so in this journey, it, whether you decide to do post-it notes or random pile management or take on some kind of technology Awesome. Get all your stuff in a place, but then don't forget that you need to take care of you. I know that that when I burned out in corporate America, it was because I was taking on everything and I stopped taking care of myself. So a few helpful tips. One is to record your meetings. There's a free Google extension and they just added it for for Zoom, and they just added it for Google Meets as well. I'm sure that, you know, Microsoft Teams has it as well. I know Zoom directly has the ability to record. But if you can record your meetings, and, you know, in the case of using an add-on called Fathom, it works for Zoom and Google My Business, um, it will automatically transcribe that for you and you can just copy and paste it. And then I've even taken that transcript, copied it, dropped it into chat GPT and said, pull out the to-do list from this transcript and it will spit out, uh, Sally needs to get to Sarah. Sarah's going to, and it spit out a pretty accurate to-do list from that transcript. 
that alone would save a lot of time. It would help you in the meetings to focus a little better and it will make sure that things don't fall through the cracks. So if you have the opportunity to record meetings, if they're on Zoom or on Google Meets or Teams, see what you can do about recording and getting a transcript of that meeting. There are a lot of things that will transcribe for you. Um, the Fathom app is free. You add it to your desktop and it will automatically record. You can shut it off whenever. So that's one idea to help save time and also help you in the preparation on projects. Um, the, th the third part, I talked about ChatGPT. It really is helpful for research. It won't replace you and it won't replace marketing in general. But if you're in, if you're working on a project and you're like stuck, ChatGPT or other AI tools, BART or others, are really kind of helpful to be able to go, huh, I don't have any ideas. So I could just say, what are some innovative ideas for employee appreciation thing? And it will pull from the whole web, the whole universe of the web, a whole list of ideas for you. And then you could go, oh, that's kind of cool. I like that idea. Or maybe you need, what are some key talking points for people who are looking for unique Christmas gifts, you know, whatever. It will do whatever you want it to and it will pull information up to 22 and it will give you kind of idea starters. Now the caveat and obviously the warning for chat GPT is don't lean on it and expect it to be exactly right. It sometimes doesn't get it right. And you'll see if you do the transcription of your meeting, sometimes the things it comes up with are a pretty good laugh, which is a great stress reliever. So I recommend it. Um, if you're not in an organization that allows you to use AI, that's okay. You can still probably find out a lot of that from Google. But even just having the transcript, you'll be able to pull out the major to-do lists from your from your meeting minutes. And, and that's a function that we use with our agency. We've got a lot of different clients in a lot of different industries, and we want to make sure we're focusing on that time with them. So we use the transcription, we put it into our ClickUp board, and make sure that every deliverable is signed to someone with a due date. So the third recommendation is get away from it. You have to take care of your health. I know it's always so much to do. And I can tell you the years I spent with just giant knots in my neck muscles and shoulders because there was so much to do. I mean, there would be whole weeks. I'd work my bum off and then be like, I don't think I got anything done. Part of that was a function of mis, misorganization, you know, being disorganized and not able to make progress. But part of it was not using my time right. And so one of the things that I don't have on this list, but I want to talk to you about is a concept called time blocking. And, you know, you've probably heard of it. You've probably tried it. That's fine. But when you get to your project plan, whether it's the folder, it's the post-its on the wall, it's a folder on your computer, whatever, make sure that you, when you look at the primary deliverables, that you put a block of time on your calendar for those deliverables. It's something I still use to this day as the CEO of an agency and I have two other businesses on the side, it's something I still use to this day to ensure that even if it's on my calendar and I decide to ignore it, I know that if I can't get to this deliverable now, I need to find another spot in my calendar to do that. When we leave our calendar wide open to just meetings, to anybody at any time, we kind of, we get about 5% of the way on a task and then, oh gosh, I forgot about this. Oh yeah, I forgot about this. And before we know it, we have done about 
1% of six things and got nowhere on anything. And so the, the really important thing is to make sure that you are putting in blocks of time. The other thing that we've done at our agency with our whole team, we have eight staff and they're in every time zone. We have identified two specific days, blocks of time when everybody's at work, that that's where our meetings will be. And as much as we can, we protect those other three days of the week to allow for time to do work. I can't tell you the number of meetings I was in and they're like, oh, marketing, will you handle that? Thinking, how am I possibly able to get any more work on my plate? And then you've got 12 meetings scheduled and no time to do work. So if you can really evaluate, do I have to be at this meeting or is the minutes good enough? Or can I come for just a portion of it and then dismiss myself? Is the meeting necessary? Sometimes we have meetings that aren't necessary. And if you aren't required to be there, maybe you need to skip it if you've got a big workload. So take a look at your calendar and find out, even if it's one day a week that you can not schedule meetings on or fewer meetings one morning a week and make sure that in that morning your head down you're not wandering around chatting with everybody but you are focused on doing the work block a time block for doing your work because otherwise it doesn't magically appear i promise <laughs> so get help you know some organizations nonprofits i've worked in or smaller hospitals, or even in the Fortune 50 company I was a vice president of, there were people who were interested in learning about outreach or learning about what we did in marketing. And they were able to help because we just worked with their supervisor and asked, hey, so-and-so has an interest. Could they spend two hours with us or an hour? Get help. There's volunteers at a lot of places that are bored and don't have enough to do. Or there may be, you know, high school students who need hours for their senior project. There may be your grandma, your kids. I'm telling you what, my children, when they were ready to apply for college, had zero issue with community service and public service time because I was a marketing person. And they were at every event, every community thing. They did Kids Day in the Park with me, the Come Out to Play, the all the things that we were involved in. I drug them in and they had a lot of volunteer time. It was good for them as well. So get help if you can. And if you don't have anybody there that can help, you know, call us or email us. Maybe we can help brainstorm some ways to get you help because there's a lot of opportunities in our community to get a little bit of help. And if they can go around town and hang up the posters for you, win, win. And rather than you spending a whole day going out delivering these brochures to whatever, you know, we, if you can find a way to get some bandwidth, that will be helpful. And then the other thing I would encourage you is to simplify your plans. If you have four, five, six, or more projects at once, you can't make them all a home run. And so the thing that you, it's not that you're giving up, but it's being realistic that. Maybe we can't go next level with our employee appreciation thing this year, but maybe we could really do a couple things really great instead of trying to do seven things masameno or just eh, kind of good. So simplify your plans if you need to. So. Creating a system and a location for every project detail will help you immensely. It will help during meetings, when you have to do the final report, when you need to give an update, when you have a one-on-one -on -one with your boss. It gives you the ability to recall and pull out that information. If you're doing a paper system and you have folders, just keep a plain, a blank piece of paper on the top and write down a accomplishment. Oh, 
increase in clicks on the website, whatever. Keep notes there so that you can just go, oh, yeah. Well, we have done this, 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 and we're distributed the brochures to all of the places. And we are, you know, able to, we're able to get more clicks on social media than we have before, or we have 25 registrants or whatever it is that's going on. It honestly, if you can start with the basics of just getting all the stuff for each project in a random pile, <laughs> get it in a folder or online somewhere, organize your emails so that you've got a email folder for every project and just drop everything in there. That way you you don't spend the time going, oh my gosh, I forgot about it. I see there's a little Arthur management. <laughs> so projects become overwhelming when we can't track the detail when we don't remember. And there's a point where you start to get spread so thin that you're just panicking and you're running from one project end just in time to the next project to the next project. And you don't ever really stop to evaluate how to go. Did it go well? Do we know how it went? What, what was success at that event or is just being done and still upright the evaluation? But I've, we've worked with a lot of clients. We certainly have worked ourselves to make sure that we aren't simply finishing, but we are evaluating if what we're doing is working. And that is really the key for your success overall in your project. And eventually, you may go see, we did huge projects for a client and they were very well attended, but the client was super unengaged and they didn't like it. They didn't have the bandwidth. They didn't have the time. And so we made the recommendation based on the amount of time it took that they don't do that event again. Sometimes that's what you need to be able to do is to say, mm, maybe, maybe this isn't great. Maybe we shouldn't be doing this event. If there isn't strong return on investment or even any kind of measurable response, then it's time to evaluate and say, mm, maybe this isn't great. And we want to avoid more of the 2 a.m. oh my gosh moments. And again, if you, if you know, you know. <laughs> so the final tips for you. Clean off your immediate workspace as much as possible, even if it's just a two-foot space around your computer screen. If you can get your desk to look like this, oh, doesn't that just make you want to breathe? Makes you want to breathe. And instead of holding your breath and being anxious, start with the random pile management. Just stack, get them over here, out of your sight so that you can at least have a little bit of space to focus. And then use that time blocking to make sure you're creating space and time on your schedule to work on each project. If you have a focused block time to move the strategy for this X campaign or project forward, and someone pops in and goes, hey, do you have a minute? Or can you help with, you know, literally, I got a call earlier in the year from someone who's like, can you come to the church and help clean the kitchen? I'm like, no, I can't. I have this thing that I'm working on right now. Would I have liked to have helped? Of course I would like to help, but I'm on a project that isn't negotiable. And so I had to say no to a non-essential. Um, make a list before you leave at the end of the day. Get all the things off your mind. It can be ugly. It can be 12 more post-it notes of that what you like. It can just be a notebook where you just go, oh, I got tomorrow. I have to get blah, 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 blah. List them all. Get them off your mind. And that will help you be able to A, disconnect from work and B, remember tomorrow. Because remember at 2 a.m. when you're like, oh, don't forget. I honestly, honestly cannot sleep once those words <laughs> Enter my mind. Don't forget. So make sure you can just take a minute before you go. Purge all the things out of your mind. And then 
that is also part of the transition away from work. If you work from home, do that purging, get up away from your desk, turn your computer off, take a walk around the block if that needs to be your commute home or go change your clothes or whatever to make sure there is a physical transition from work to personal life. And that way you're not on all the time. And then try to map out just the three most important things you need to do each week. You can list everything and then make sure you're prioritizing the three most important things. If you find you have extra time and can get to more, that's awesome. But when we write a to-do list and plan on 14 things to get done, truth is we get about three or four done. So it's just, that's where the project planning and being able to map out a timeline is really important. I used that approach even when I was in college. I would look at when the paper was due and I would set temporary timelines to break it up over the month so that I wasn't the night before at 3 a.m. finishing my paper because I left it all to the last minute. And I think that if you can break out the chunks of the project into temporary, you know, or penciled in deliverable dates for different parts. I need to have the theme picked by this. I need to have the graphic stuff picked by this. I need to have the caterer done by this. I need to be able to send the invitations at this time. Social posts will go at this time. Just break it down into little bits so that you can break it down into chewable chunks and not try to swallow the whole elephant at once. So thank you for joining us. That was just super practical, really just super in the weeds kind of practical tips for you on how to organize a little bit better. If you have any questions, feel free to put it into the chat or if you have if you want any of the templates that you saw earlier please get in touch with us they're available on our websites claritypx.com bossladyconsult.com or you can email us reach out whatever we would love to be able to send you any of the tools that we use we're happy to so thank you for joining us and we appreciate you i hope you have great luck with your next programs and that you can begin to implement a few of these ideas to give you a little more peace and be way more in charge of your workflow. Thank you.